The Maryland Association of Counties, also known as MACO, congratulate you on your general election victory. MACO is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that advocates on behalf of county governments. We represent all 23 counties and Baltimore City, and we welcome you as a newly elected county official. We look forward to working with you over the course of the next four years and beyond. In this video, you will hear from current and former elected officials offering advice to get you through your first year, prepare yourself for holding public office, how to balance the demands of elected and personal life, and how to work with media. We hope you enjoy this video and learning from elected officials who have served county government over the years. What is the best advice you can offer a newly elected official? Well, first of all, congratulations. Uh, second, try to continue to focus on why you ran. Once you get into office, there are going to be folks who agree with you and folks who disagree. And oftentimes, unfortunately, the ones who disagree are going to be the loudest. So remember why you ran and do the best to serve the most of your community. Ask a lot of questions. There's so much for all of us to learn, uh, and we won't know what we need to know to help our constituents unless we ask a lot of questions. I am uh, got a reputation in Baltimore City Council for doing that, and it's important uh, because the more information we know, the better we can make decisions. What was your biggest surprise during your first year as a county elected official? biggest thing is the learning curve. It's, it's fast. It's, you have to come up to speed. If you're fortunate, you will have historical um, people on your council or your commission, whatever the case may be, that can help you along. In my case, we were all five new commissioners, so we all kind of learned from each other as we went. Um, and the, uh, that, honestly, that's it. It's the learning curve. You've you got to get up to speed because you're governing the whole, you know, the county you're uh, a part of, you're governing from day one. And there can't be any letdowns. You, you can't say, oh, I didn't know that. It's, that's not an excuse when a constituent comes up and asks you to do something. So just be prepared uh, and, never, and never run away from a phone call. I, I, I talk to some people that are like, I can never get a hold of my uh, representative. Don't, never shy away from it. It's, you're going to have good calls. You're going to have bad calls. But you've got to take them either way because that's what you signed up for. So The government does actually function slowly and it takes a lot more time to get things done than you think. You do have to build consensus with people in your community and with the other elected officials around you. And so government operates slowly. And when you come out of the gate, you wanna get things done fast and it just takes a lot longer than you think. The House is very different from the Senate. I served eight years in the House of Delegates and now I'm completing eight years as a state senator. I think one of the biggest surprises is despite our proximity, across the street and across the hall from each other, how infrequently we really work together. You really have to make an effort to work with people from the other body. I think that's unfortunate, but that's the reality. What has been your most rewarding experience as an elected official? I've only been an elected official for about 18 months. Um, and I love it. It's the hardest job I've ever had um, and the most rewarding um, in so many different ways. Um, I enjoy helping our constituents solve uh, issues and uh, getting very involved in policy making. Uh, I've also been in rooms that I would not have been able to be in uh, when I was an advocate. So it's, uh, it's, it's a great experience. The most rewarding experience that I've had is the relationships that I have formed. I mean, I love all of the policy decisions that have gone on for the last 12 years, and I know that I've made a difference. But along the way, the people that I've met, and I will tout Mako, the relationships that I have built with all of the other counties and their elected officials, and I truly consider them my friends. I think the most rewarding for me is being able to help people who but for us being in office and serving might not have gotten the help that they need, especially when it's something that transforms their lives for the better. What would you describe as your biggest challenge as a local elected official? Time management. Uh, the biggest challenge is time management. We get emails and phone calls across 
the day every day about issues in our district, uh, but we also want to spend time on big policy decisions uh, so that we can help our city uh, with our big uh, issues. Uh, my um, emphasis has been on housing and community development, uh, and so I want to spend time, and I do work hard to spend a lot of time on those policy decisions, but it's, it's definitely a balance between um, working to uh, resolve the issues in the community as well as work on the big stuff. What's the biggest misconception the average citizen has about local elected officials? That we have all this power. Um, literally, when you're at the local level, county, uh, municipality level, you are governed by everything above you, the state, the federal government. You, you come across a lot of mandates that when you're sitting at home and you're playing armchair politician at the house and you're not involved in this, you think, oh, well, our commissioner should be able to do this or they should be able to do that. And it, it's, you'd be surprised at how much you can actually uh, do without some other uh, entity being involved that you have to go to or get permission from or, or work with. So it, it's, that's probably, and that's the most humbling thing about it is the fact that you don't have the power that you, you were told by everybody you have. So uh, without a doubt, that would be the number one uh, thing. I feel like they don't understand the difference between a locally elected official, a state official, and a federal official, and which issues that we actually have um, the ability to make a decision on. They just see that government is government. What advice can you offer newly elected officials for working with the media? Well, I think if you're working with the media, you always have to be honest, be as concise as possible, so the quote in the paper is what you want it to be, and never say anything you don't want your mother to read in the newspaper. It's really important that you, A, be responsive. Some people are too scared of the media. They're there to help amplify your views. And yes, we can use social media, but there's more credibility if you're in the Washington Post, the Baltimore Sun, Maryland Matters, on TV or radio. So treat them as allies, but they are not necessarily your friends. So don't badmouth someone uh, and then think it's not going to slip out somewhere. Be really careful about going off the record until you've really established a personal relationship of trust. Because some reporters are new, they forget the line between personal and professional, they forget the line between off the record and on the record in their notepad so, or on their computer. So be thoughtful, be succinct, but be engaged. What was one of your successful initiatives or projects, and how did you gain support from your colleagues for its approval? Well, as county executive, the most important thing that we generally do is get a budget done. And so ensuring that we talk with our other colleagues on what are their budgetary priorities, um, and then talk with the community. Try to build consensus. Oftentimes, when I was a legislator, that's the only way to get th things done. However, as an executive, while it may not be the only way to get things done, it's still the best way to get things done. Describe the opportunities for involvement and benefits of being an active member of MAKO. This is my favorite question because MAKO has totally changed my way of thinking. When I first ran for office, there were, there were issues that I ran for, you know, whether that was budgets, uh, I owned a business, so I was the only one that signed the front of a paycheck versus the back of a paycheck, and I had my own personal reasons for running and reasons that people asked me to run. But from day one, I embraced MAKO. For the first four years I was in office and I wasn't in the position that I am now, being on the board of directors and an officer and moving up to being president of MAKO. They taught me everything that I needed to really learn, to leave the party hat at the door, to have relationships with the other elected officials in other counties, and has had the opportunity to understand that rural and urban doesn't really, it exists, but it's, doesn't, it's not important. It doesn't matter how many zeros are the end of, at the end of your budget. MAKO, is what can make you grow as an elected official. There are so many resources available in the organization. And while each county gets one 
legislative representative. So it's truly one county, one vote, where your voice can be heard, whether you're a Montgomery County or a Talbot County, your voice is just as strong. But you get a chance to meet these other colleagues and realize that all of our problems are exactly the same. And you can figure out how they solved a problem and you can work together and build those relationships. Oh, that's, I mean, that's easy. It, one thing it does, it gives you insight into what other counties are doing. It's a great networking opportunity to look at what's working in other places so you're not constantly trying to reinvent the wheel. It's a great place for all you new people who have, uh, you know, maybe don't have historical people on your commission or council to uh, fall back on. You've got all that wealth and knowledge that you can walk around and ask the questions and, and you can get those answers. Whether you're a big county, small county, medium county, it doesn't matter. We all kind of have the same problems, it's just in the, uh, the scale in which you deal with them um, in terms of people and, and, and the size of the problems. So. MACO, the Maryland Association of Counties, is one of the most effective and respected organizations. When they come lobby, when it's either your representatives who are on MACO staff or whether it's local elected officials, we are here to listen. You represent every corner of our state. And because the 24 jurisdictions have such diverse interests and populations, when MACO speaks with one united voice, we tend to want to listen and we tend to want to respond. So be proud to be a member of MACO, engage, make sure you are getting on a committee, and then make sure that you are staying connected to your legislators. Come and testify before us. We want to hear your views.